You know, I'm starting today's show with an assumption about who's out there watching me, and that is that you're audiophiles. Now, I think that that's always true, that a lot of you are audiophiles, but more so today because I'm going to review a moving coil cartridge, the Lyra Delos cartridge. It's really good. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, but before I get into that, I just want to say I am in this heavy analog listening mode, playing records in my private listening time. Maybe 80% of that time is playing vinyl. That hasn't happened in a very, very, very long time. I mean, it's been going on for a couple of years now, but just more and more so. I play less and less digital <laughs> and more and more vinyl. Something's going on. Something's going on because I'm just drawn to it. I have a large uh, LP collection, but I also have a large CD collection. But anyway, that's, what, that's the background to doing today's review. But I have one very brief digital interlude, and that is, uh, for the second time, I'm going to announce that my friend David Chesky has a new uh, record company. It's called the Audiophile Society, and he's offering a free high-res download to this specific album, the Hi-Fi Collective, and there is a link in the description below to get that free download. Done. Back to analog. Well, the Lyra. First of all, I think it's a really cool looking cartridge. I think Lyra cartridges all look nice, but this one in that kind of orangey color is nice. It's a, it's an, an anodized aluminum body with open architecture, has a solid boron cantilever. I'll put up all the specs and all the details about the technical stuff relating to its design. One of the standout features of the design is what Lyra calls new angle technology. And I'm going to put up a graphic right now to show you what that is. It, the showing is way better than me describing that. But while you're pondering that, I'm going to mention that all Lyra cartridges are designed by Jonathan Carr, and each and every one is assembled by Yoshinori Mishima. And uh, he listens to each one with test tones and test records and music, and he does fine tuning to make it sound like what he thinks it should be. How about that? Each one 100% quality controlled by Mr. Mishima. Now this model, the Delos, came out in uh, 2008. They're not claiming any changes since then, but this is my first experience living with a Lyra cartridge at home. And uh, it really put me through some changes because it sounds, well, significantly different than my two other cartridges that are in this price class. Oh. The Delos sells for $1,995. So I'm going to compare the Delos with my Dynavector XX2 and also uh, Ortofon Cadenza Blue, both low output moving coil cartridges. Now, the Delos is low output, but it has a higher than average output of 0.6 millivolts. So as for the rest of the system, I was using a Technics SL1200G turntable, Parasound JC3 Plus phono preamplifier, Pass XP30 preamp, Pass XA25 power amplifier, and the speakers were the Pure Audio Project Duet 15s. And one other thing, the Delos is the least expensive cartridge in the line. Now, oh, yes, there will be, uh -huh, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day. Now, as for the music, I listen to a lot of records. As I mentioned just a few minutes ago, I've been in a heavy vinyl mode. And one of the records that popped up right away was this one by one of my favorite bands of the 60s, Procol Harum. You know, famous for the whiter shade of pale, right? their mega selling hit which isn't my favorite song of theirs by a long shot. But anyway, this particular album, uh, Procol Harum Live with the Edmund Symphony Orchestra, was recorded in 1971. And it is a staggering recording. I mean, it's so big. The, the grandeur of the, <laughs> of the presentation is just immense. To hear a live rock band with a symphony orchestra and a choir doing their songs, rock songs. And I think it's an incredibly successful experiment. The performances 
were fantastic. They had to do the whole thing in one day. It's obviously really expensive to record a symphony orchestra and a rock band. But anyway, I love the sound. I love the balance. Highly recommend it. And I'm playing it here with the Lyra and I'm just reveling in the energy of this music and just the way it filled the hall, the concert hall. And that's just somehow appearing in my living room, in my listening room. Really, really impressive. One other aspect of this recording that I've always loved, but now I'm hearing it in a different way, is B.J. Wilson, the drummer, Procol Harum's drummer. And the way his sound fills the concert hall is so beautifully revealed, more so than ever, by the Delos. I just want to take a minute here to talk about this incredible album by Jake Xerxes Fusel. The music is blues, it's folk, it's traditional songs, uh, public domain songs, and a couple of originals. But the overall tone of the record is unhurried, unmolested. The music just fills, fills the room. And it's just gorgeous. It's really gorgeous. I love everything about this record. I keep turning on my friends to this album and now I'm letting you guys know. And I have to say yeah, that the Delos was doing a fine job letting me hear the magic from these grooves. Here's my next music selection, the Kronos Quartet Long Time Passing LP. Now, this was recorded in 2020. And it's a tribute to the folk singer and political activist Pete Seeger gorgeous recording um, and you can just I, with this cartridge with the Delos I'm just sensing the bows uh, pressure on the strings that mm, that rosiny sound a little more clearly than I'm used to it's just I'm hearing more detail more clarity more of that you are there sensation now I did switch over at this point to the Dynavector XX2 and the Dynavector kind of toned that down the strings had a sweeter sound, but a less clear sound, especially in like the lower mid-range. There was more body to the sound and to the vocalist. Great singing, by the way, on this record. Um, so that's where we started in terms of comparisons. The Dynavector was a little, little more in my uh, wheelhouse, let's put it that way. The next recording to change gears entirely was this Creedence Clearwater Greatest Hits album. And you know what? The Delos way with dynamics and the rhythm section coming off these records is just of, or the, off these songs is just so intense. You know, this is another one of my albums. I have lots of them that I haven't played this particular album in a really long time. And what I was struck by is the way the band just moves, the way it just cranks out. I mean, John Fogarty's vocals are on fire. I mean, he's just it's like he's never going to sing again. He's putting so much energy into his vocals and that crunchy guitar sound and just that rhythm. And, and Suzy Q. <laughs> oh man, what a great song in that long section in the middle of the instrumental. The guitar, it's just mesmerizing to me. So the, that music just was released, was liberated by the Delos. And returning to the Dynavector XX2, it, it was more tapped down. The dynamics were bigger coming off the Delos and the XX2 kind of tapped it down a bit. Now, this is a bright recording, by the way. Maybe too bright. And I was hearing that <laughs> in all its glory with the Delos and it was less mm, edgy, irritating with the XX2. Okay, so the next recording was this one. This is a Max Roach percussion ensemble, jazz drummer Max Roach. And I met Max at Tower Records. This is in 1984. And we sort of bonded a little tiny bit and he came to the store that I was working at Sound by Singer to listen to some speakers and he gave me this album. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, it was a new record at the time, 1984. And anyway, I played it on with the Delos cartridge. And the Delos really nailed like the transient response. The leading edge just had that attack. There was no softening, no, it just was, a, and the dynamics of the, these big bass drums were explosive. You know, it was really pushing the limits of my uh, Pure Audio Project 
do at 15s, 15 inch woofers. I was feeling the music. But what really was striking with the Delos was, yeah, the bass was really tight, really fast, but it was that, that just thereness of it and just that sense of being in this space with all these incredible musicians hitting things. And yeah, and the sticks against metal, that kind of attack, it did it so well. Now, when I switched over to the Ortofan Cadenza Blue, that was all reduced. Those dynamics that were like this are now more, I'm sorry, those dynamics that were like this are now more like that. Not a subtle difference. Like I'm saying, this cartridge sounds more different than other moving coils than, than I usually get. It's in a different, it's doing different things. It's all about communicating dynamics and energy in music. And it has, I think, really great tone. Singers sounded amazing. Oh, and the imaging was really good. I had a sense of front to back depth on this record. The M Boom record is very well played by the Delos. And that was reduced on the Ortofan Cadenza Blue. And then I finished up with the Chambers Brothers Time Has Come Today album. Wow. Now, if you guys don't know the Chamber Brothers, they kind of were mixing a gospel sound with funk and psychedelic. This is 1967 or 68. And they had a big hit with this song, with this particular track, Time Has Come Today, which has this you know, freak out section and there's fuzzed out guitars and weird things happening to the vocals. And it's one of those songs that you just, you're, it's an exploration. It's a sonic exploration and the Delos was doing it proud. Again, I'm hearing more stuff, the edges of the distortion. I love the sound of, of intentional guitar distortion and that fuzzed out sound was so good over the Delos cartridge. Okay, so let's jump into, so Steve, what do you really think? What do you really think of the Lyra Delos cartridge? I make, this cartridge excites me because when I play familiar music, I'm hearing new sounds. And that is a big kick. 50 year old recordings and there they are. And I'm hearing, it just sounds more like, it's extracting more music from the grooves. I'm just, it's been there all along in the grooves and now I'm hearing it for the first time. So it is a very clear, very high resolution device. But that also means that when you play bright recordings or harsh recordings, or less than good recordings, gonna, that's what you're gonna hear. It's not gonna sugarcoat anything. I mean, the, the Cadenza Blue and the Dynavector XX2, they do sweeten the sound and make it a little bit more palatable. It's still gonna reveal uh, problems in recordings, but not as much as the Delos does. But, you know, it's, the, it's one of those, the good, the bad, and the ugly. When it's good, the Delos is gonna give you all the goodness. <laughs> okay, so now it's time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Kurt sent in these pictures and his description list is a little confusing to me, but I'm gonna get through this. Anyway, he has two turntables. Stereo turntable is a fully loaded Lin with a Kuetsu black gold line cartridge. The mono turntable is a Dr. Feichert Valeri with a linear power supply Origin Live Silver Tone Arm and a HANA SL Mono Cartridge. The CD player is a Musical Fidelity M3S CD, Phono Stage Luxman EQ 500, Line Stage Prima Luna Prologue Premium, Power Amplifier, Airtight ATM300R. Now the speakers in the list are Tecton The Perfect Set, but the speakers we see are Pure Audio Project Quintet 15s. The speaker cable is Nordist Red Dawn, which is one of the cables I use. And the equipment racks are Quadraspire, which is also, I use Quadraspire racks. And the acoustic treatment is by Michael Green Design. That's it. Thank you, Kurt. All right, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel with reviews and think pieces and interviews and Audiophiliac viewer systems of the day, I would urge you to consider, just consider 
joining my Patreon. So check it out. Check um, the, the address for Patreon is on the screen right now. Look around, see if it works for you. You can join for a month or two and then split, or you can join and stick around for years, whatever suits you. And what else you could subscribe to this channel? We're going to get to, I hope, I hope, I hope, 250,000 subscribers by the end of this year with your help. And if you just like a video, and if you got this far into this video, I assume you do like it at least a little tiny bit, please hit the like button. I would really appreciate that. And with that, I can say, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.